You're listening to Pure Indulgence here on Radio Dentata with your host, Sasha Ilovich. Hi, and welcome to an extremely loud edition of Pure Indulgence. I'm your host, Sasha Ilovich, and I'm here today with Max Myers of ACC Holdings, who also produces Don Cervantes Cigars. We're at the Occidental Cigar Club in San Francisco. Beautiful weather outside, been a great day. Um, how's your stay been in the States, first of all? Oh, good, good. I've been meeting a lot of people, meeting a lot of other cigar brands, and the, and the guys blending those cigars and going to a lot of events. It's been a very educational trip. Awesome. So you're with ACC Holdings, which produces a Don Cervantes cigar. And before I ask you about that, i got to tell you honestly, the Masterpiece Platinum is kicking my palate's ass. It's wonderful. I've got, I've got coffee. I've got dark cocoa. I've got cinnamon. Many, many hints of it, but they're there. It's, it's very, very flavorful. Is this a Maduro? Yes, it's a, this is a single Maduro. Okay, compared to the Trace Maduro, which you guys have out, which is a triple Maduro. Yeah, yeah, the triple Maduro, we use both Maduro wrapper, Maduro binder, and some Maduro in the filler mixed with a few other breeds of tobacco. All right, very good. So our listeners know that I'm an aficionado of taking the good life and making it your life. So tell us, how does Don Cervantes fit into that mold? Don Cervantes is an old-school classic brand, actually was called Cervantes back in the late 1800s. And uh, Don Cervantes now is one of the dominant brands in the luxury markets worldwide. In the United States, it hasn't. we haven't sold it yet, and we're just preparing to launch it. From what I've tasted so far, it's an exquisite brand for those who've got a taste palette. If you're a fan of Davidoff, would that be a comparable cigar? I think the difference between us and Davidoff might lie in the blending and the origin of the tobaccos. We have quite a variety of tobaccos that we grow on our farm in Ecuador, and with the, all of those varieties, we have quite a quite a large palette of taste that we can mix together. Um, what I do appreciate a lot about Davidoff is their construction quality is fantastic. It's it's superb, and their packaging is very clean and very elegant. And we brought we have we brought this beautiful packaging and beautiful accessories together with our unique blends and unique tobacco origins in order to bring what we believe is the best of both worlds. You've definitely got a very unique product line. How did you guys come up with that to the begin with? Well, we started years ago distributing cigars, and then we begin, after that we moved into private labeling. When we realized we really needed tight controls due to a lot of um, you know lack of control from from doing the being in the private label business, we started we invested in a, in the farm that is producing Don Cervantes now. We we invested in this farm and factory so that we can grow what we want, control what we want, get all the blends the way we want, and never have to worry about you know somebody you know running out of tobacco and things like that that we that we might want to use. And since then, we have been very rigid in our quality standards, and we have we roll all of our cigars entubado with triple ring caps. Every I mean the cigars after you burn them down can stand on their own ash, and we have a lot of photos that are emailed from our clients showing that. And the, again, for me, the most important thing is the taste. Aside Aside from just the construction standards that we employ, but the taste is a spe- is a unique combination of very very long fermentation times and a lot of unique tobacco breeds that most people don't have. Um, not just saying they don't have it, but it seems to me that a lot of cigar brands are limited in how many different kind of breeds of tobacco they're able to use, and I think we've been able to overcome that because we grow whatever we want to grow on our own farm. We have about 20 hectares, and we can divide the farm up to grow whatever kind of tobaccos we feel that we're going to need down the road. I've noticed when you were showing me pictures earlier, you've got some very, very beautiful plants, first of all. Second of all, my question to you is, when it comes to workers, tell me about an average day 
for the workers? Well, workers on the farm would, you know, start, of course, in the morning. <clears throat> There's only, we only grow three months a year. We rest the soil another not for the, the other nine months of the year. So our busiest time would be near, actually around this time of year right now is when we're, you know, we're getting close to harvest and all the tobacco's out on the field and we have to start cutting from the bottom of the plants all the way up. We have to hang them in the, in the drying barns and we have to move them from the drying barns into the fermentation barn. And, and stack them in, in the pilones. And that is a very, very labor-intensive process that we have a lot of workers on the field during that time. But these kind of workers move around, and so when we're not using them, they, they'll leave and they'll go to um, a banana plantation somewhere else or a cocoa plantation somewhere else because they're, they have the ability to, to move around and get jobs wherever they need to. Um, now, we trim down our staff at other times in the year when we're simply resting the soil and we're managing fermentation and aging down on the farm, then we have a lot less people to, over, to oversee the, 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 farm, the farm operations. In the factory, we have about 25 rollers and we have about 10 leaf sorters. So the leaf sorters are the ones who take all of the leaf from the farm and they sort, sort it by breed, by cut off of the plant, by, you know, by year, because not all of it ends up in the factory right away. We, we put it into aging aging bales and aging um, crates for years before we use it. So in the fa in the factory itself is where we do all the leaf sorting. Then we will sort leaf by all the different by all the different varieties that we need to blend the cigars coming up for that week. And the leaf sorters sort based on quality, based on filler wrapper. They do all they separate it, they destem it, things like that. Then the rollers, of course, roll all of our tobaccos in into the different brands that we produce in our factory. So I'd suggest, I guess by what you've told me so far and what we talked about last night, you take a very active role in your processes. Yeah, we had to take a very active role because it's important that our clients get the product that they're expecting to get. For example, if you go buy a Mercedes from a Mercedes dealer, if you you know what, if you buy an E-Class Mercedes today or you buy an E-Class Mercedes Mercedes six months from now in a completely different country, it has to be the same thing. And unfortunately, there is a. I'm not saying I know any specific brands that have this problem, but if we don't maintain this kind of rigid oversight, we can very easily end up with different tobaccos mixed into the cigars that are not consistent with our actual blend. Our blends are very important because they have a very specific taste profile that is targeted at a specific kind of a smoker. So in Don Cervantes, as you know, we have Masterpiece Blue, Masterpiece Gold, Masterpiece Platinum, Tres Maduros, and Presidente. Those are very specific blends that have a very different taste profile. I've, from my experience, I've seen a lot of brands where one cigar to the other, I mean, within the brand, you know, a version one and a version two, or, a, you know, a green label, red label, whatever they happen to call it for that brand, they taste kind of the same. So we have spent most of the time, most of my time, has been sitting in the factory trying to create dramatically different tastes that are not just different for the sake of being different, but different to reach a goal in my mind of what different people want to taste. We have very earthy, creamy blends. We have very rich Maduro blends. We have rich and spicy Maduro blends. And we have very earthy, Cubanish tasting blends blends, and this is all due to the blending and the, the very careful attention to detail that we put into the blends and maintaining those blends over time. 